Welcome to Crosspoint. 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 An interactive program featuring ministers and leaders of the Christian community addressing the issues that are challenging the church today. Here's your host, Mark Taylor. The ideological left wing here in America is working hard to transform the people into something that the founders never intended. This is Crosspoint. I'm your host, Mark Taylor. Robert McGinnis is my guest today. We're going to be discussing his new book, Divided We Stand. Uh, Robert McGinnis is a retired Army lieutenant colonel. In 1993, Robert served with the Pentagon to help write the Don't Ask, Don't Tell legislation. Colonel McGinnis has, for decades, had media experience. Well, back with us again here on Cross Point, we have uh, Lieutenant Colonel Robert L. McGinnis. Um, we've talked to you, uh, Robert, before. Uh, you've got a new book out called Divided We Stand. It's talking about the globalist scheme for a one-world government. There's no doubt about what's going on out there in our world and the intentions of some pretty wild people. In the preference of the book, you say today America is incredibly divided and much more than perhaps its beginnings, especially in the time even prior to the Civil War. So you think we're getting more divided than that? Yeah, I really do, Mark. Uh, The reality is that all you have to do is look at some polling, uh, national polling by the likes of the New York Times say that Nine out of ten Americans uh, profess that we're on the wrong track, and almost nine out of ten say we're deeply divided. So, yeah, I think you know, as we look across, whether it's via the media or within our own local communities, we see this division very, very deep. Uh, and it's very similar to the situation in the late 1850s when we were a divided nation over the the topic of slavery. So yes, I I think that we're at a tipping point. I think if we're to survive as a nation, we have to figure out how to uh, get out of this morass of division. Well, and and you talk about that uh, here in the book on page five. You say, for the purposes of divided, we will understand division in the context of social divisions that streams from the concept that society is separated into the powerful elite and the powerless. So we've got strong men trying to rule over everyone. Oh, well, certainly. And, you know, when you operationalize division, as we've seen throughout history, and it goes back into the biblical times, you know, we see that in the hands of the few, the powerful that I profile and I kind of say it really depends upon what their worldview is and who's behind it. Clearly, I, you know, as I write it from a Christian biblical uh, perspective, I say that the spiritual component, uh, Satan and his legion of demons, uh, is recruiting human proxies to do the very things that are necessary to gain control over the, 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 you know, the people. Uh, and they use the means of government, they use the means of the economy, uh, social intimidation, a host of things to separate us, to kind of mark us off so that we fall into control. I, I talk about in there as well, Mark, about what Ben Franklin said many years ago, one of our founders, and he said there are people in three categories, people that won't move, people that might move, and people that move. In other words, there is an element that will always follow what you know the prevailing authorities are telling them to do. But there's also an element that refuses uh, unless they are compelled by what is really in their collective best interest. So we, we find ourselves today, arguably, based upon polling and, and you know just my certain observations, that you know this is a very, very divided country, and we're going in a direction that's very worrisome. We've been here before, as I said, in the Civil War leading up to it, uh, but I see that the, the tentacles of that division are very broad and very serious. Colonel McGinnis, don't you think by we're becoming more polarized, as people call for diversity and equity and inclusion and all that kind of stuff? Isn't that just polarizing us? Well, it is. You know, the whole idea of wokeism, or DNI. Yeah, th- those sorts of things are, of course, embraced by our federal government. Uh, they hire people that are 
you know, basically going to advance someone because they're of the right color or the right gender. And then, of course, you have the left that is really supporting ideas like Black Lives Matter, which is a radical group, a Marxist group, arguably, and defunding the police. And they fly these you know, gay pride parade uh, flags. They talk about safe spaces. They talk about gender-neutral bathrooms. They talk about pronouns you know, and much more. You know, things that, you know, certainly from a biblical perspective, uh, that, you know, I object to, and I find that uh, many, if not most, Americans object to this. Uh, they want to return to a time in which civil liberties were respected, that, yeah, we have differences of opinion, uh, but we don't use the power of government and the power of the media, and much less the, the new social media, to intimidate uh, those that disagree with us. And yet, that's where we are today, and so that division is very harsh and a very reality, much of reality, as to what we're facing today. And you mentioned the world, word, you know, about journalists and, and the media. Uh, you talk about on page 14 uh, the powerful journalist, secular leftist worldview, and you say historically American journalists were uh, partisans. However, during the mid 20th century, did Americans develop this now diminished view that journalists were to be fair and unbiased in reporting. Today, the problem is that journalism has uh, reverted to the model of previous eras, whereby most seem to report the news with a bias, especially on the right, leftist political preferences, while still claiming to be fair and unbiased. That is so very true. <laughs> yeah, well, today, as you know, Mark, uh, only 32 percent, of uh, less than a third of Americans, trust our media. You know, a short time ago, 1976, you know, almost three quarters trusted our media to report. Now, what's happened uh, historically is in 1936, um, uh, we brought over some progressives in our culture, uh, John Dewey specifically, with uh, Rockefeller money, brought uh, a host of Marxists from the Frankfurt School, and they were, you know, brought and in, inserted into Hollywood, into our journalism schools, you know, on the East Coast and the West Coast. And as a result, uh, based upon, you know, their writings, which I documented in a previous book, um, Give Me Liberty, Not Marxism, uh, I indicate that they were intending to radically alter America's culture. And they did so through the media, through the education establishment, and, of course, the infiltration of government. Uh, so this is not a mistake that journalists today uh, are being used for the purpose of the left to indoctrinate us and to antagonize us uh, and alienate us against uh, what traditionally uh, has, up until not that long ago, been a predominantly Christian culture. Now, of course, the title of the book's Divided We Stand, but you say the globalist scheme for a one-world government. Now, on page 21, uh, you're talking about the World Economic Forum there, and you talk about what went over in Davos, which is in Switzerland. Uh, there was a summit gathering of mostly unelected uh, oligarchs and intended on manipulating the world to fit their selfish aim, and evidently they are a group of... Uh, well, all kinds of people that have out that make outlandish statements. Typically, you say they speak of global interests and governments as if they run the world, and they only trash nationalism and patriotism. And uh, this is a very um, groups people better keep an eye on. Oh, absolutely. You know, Klaus Schwab, who of course runs uh, World Economic Forum. Uh, interestingly, his son is married to a Chinese lady, and he advises. President Xi in Beijing. So you, you can see the tethering there of globalism. You know, Schwab has said some pretty outlandish things, which I quote in uh, Divided We Stand, as well as the likes of John Kerry, our uh, former Vice President Gore, and, and the like. Uh, these people who gather in Switzerland uh, are the, the wealthy, the well-connected, what I call you know, the elite uh, of our world, in quotes, and they do believe, based upon their own statements, some of which I capture, uh, that they are really uh, 
I suppose, the god of this world. They want to manipulate government and make it the premier interest of everyone. And, of course, they're very much against uh, any form of religion. And they advance uh, their ideas through diversity, equity. Uh, They advance, you know, the, the whole environmentalist agenda, which blames us for the, the carbon footprint that they say is destroying the world. And, of course, the, the whole globalist idea. You know, a few years ago, I wrote another book on the whole idea of what globalism is going to take us to. And, of course, uh, that uh, we saw in the COVID-19 disaster you know, how we were short on antibiotics in certain countries like China. Uh, we're taking advantage of the naivete regarding globalism. And, of course, I think the popularity of a Donald Trump is that he was focused on making America great again, which, of course, is nationalism and is very contrary, just the polar opposite of what the globalists want. So we, we see, with regard to certainly the president administration under Mr. Biden, they push a very globalist agenda. They pr- push a very environmentally... Uh, climate change agenda, and that influences not only the Green New Deal and the legislation they push, but also our foreign policy, and they you know, obviously excuse the likes of China, which pollutes the world uh, far more than anyone else, and yet uh, we find that you know, their social policies are incredibly radical, you know, whether it's an open border uh, or it has to do with... Uh, you know, the advancement of transgender issues and the like, uh, they're just absolutely contrary to what someone, you know, embraces a biblical worldview would believe. You know, a good example you talk about on page 38, you'd mentioned about Satan having his and those out there that do his bidding. Well, you say here Satan's divisive agenda includes attacking God's plan for men and women. He seeks to confuse us about who we are, and in particular, he creates gender confusion, especially among young people, uh, thanks to our corrupt culture. Then he offers a solution to his evil-inspired idea of gender dysphoria or sex reassignment surgery. We've got all these things happen, and it's not just, uh, Colonel McGinnis, it's not just happening in these far places on the west and the east coast or new york city uh california whatever uh, right now branson missouri where it's close to me and you know where it is has got an issue with now they're wanting to come in and drag queens are wanting to have a show on the strip and the fight's on you know they're trying to keep them out of there trying to pass city ordinances and stuff but here we go again they will not they're going to try to corrupt every level of america they can well of course and that's their stated agenda and this is not to be surprising we had a drag queen uh, exhibition in the community i live outside of washington dc and people from our church we went over there and you know, share the gospel and the like. But, you know, we, we need to recognize that the culture uh, of the left coast and the eastern seaboard of this country is contaminating everyone because we have social media and we have a, a public media uh, that is embracing this radicalism. And it goes back a long time, as I indicated earlier, the Frankfurt School people came over with this agenda. And, of course, it's anti-God. It's promoting a decadent lifestyle, and, of course, it's promoting the interest of the elite. And the elite, as I go into the book, you know, you, you know, Mark, that I, I talk about, you know, the worldview. The worldview of our leadership does matter. And if they are anti-God, if they are all about getting power for themselves, then they're going to use all the instruments they have at their available, whether it be the government's uh, Justice Department or it's the social media or it's the wealth and the distribution of wealth uh, through the mechanism of government, they're going to do what they think is necessary. And so I think to a large degree, that's why we're uh, so divided today that there's still a segment, a very robust segment in this country that just doesn't want to tolerate the direction these people are taking us. Now, 
you you written several books. You did a lot of good stuff over the years with this new one out, Divided We Stand, The Globalist Scheme for a One World Government. Now, if people want to know more about this book, other books that you've done, uh, what you're doing out there, maybe, uh, I don't know how you have your websites and stuff set up, how would people, though, go about doing this? Well, certainly all these are on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, you know, all the retailers around the United States and online, so they're, they're widely available. Uh, and, of course, uh, you know, I have a, a Facebook site that I, I put some of this stuff on, and then I publish in uh, Fox News and in other outlets around the country, and then, of course, Defender Publishing there in Missouri uh, is my publisher, and uh, Skywatch will carry my materials as well. All right. Well, folks, stay with us, and we're going to be back with more in just a moment. This is Mark Taylor. If you miss a broadcast of Crosspoint, you can always go to our website at www.kneo.org and click on the Programs page. There you can access the current Crosspoint program as well as the last four programs that have been aired. Never miss another Crosspoint program again. Go to www.kneo.org today. You're listening to Crosspoint. I'm your host, Mark Taylor. And my guest today here on Crosspoint is uh, Colonel Robert McGinnis, uh, and he has put out a new book. He's done several books along uh, the lines of trying to inform us what goes on in our world, especially our government, since he was connected to it. But Divided We Stand, um, the globalist scheme for a one-world government. And uh, you say there, uh, you, you talk about the massive corruption that we have and everything, um, and you also uh, talk about, uh, you know, what you think that the uh, how they divide America, the seven critical areas, in other words, of institutions, the family, uh, politics, religion, education, the workplace, the media, the government. You believe those are the ones where they pretty much zero in on, and that's what they want to change, and then that changes basically everything else. Well, of course, you know, you go after the what we call the crucible of society, and that's the family. And so they've been really, you know, the, the waves of feminism. There are three waves of feminism that have attacked, you know, the, certainly the biblical family. And today we find, of course, uh, you know, fewer people getting married. They're getting married later. They're having fewer children uh, divorce is far more common, uh, and then the alternatives, the so-called homosexual marriage and so forth. So they've, they've really radically changed uh, what the family uh, used to be. And, you know, certainly historically, we know that the family, according to James Wilson, who was one of the you know, original members of the U.S. Supreme Court, he said the duty of parents is to maintain their children decently and according to their circumstances, to protect them according to their dictates and so forth, to educate them, etc. So, you know, they've gone after the family, you know, the nuclear family. They've uh, you know, really undermined you know, through you know, a corrupted, a amoral culture. And, of course, they've had the help of political progressives in government that have changed you know, government laws to encourage the destruction of the family, and of course, uh, I, I can't ignore the fact that uh, Satan and his army of demons are very, very involved. And, and even though a lot of people, you know, reject, you know, that we're influenced by outside forces, I, I know as a spiritual person, uh, I see that every day in my life, and I certainly see it in, in what's going on in my government. So, yeah, yeah, we have a lot of dark enemies against the family. And it's not just the culture and social media, but, you know, there's that spiritual element as well. Now, you talk about in the book, uh, uh, I think right at the end of page or end of chapter five in there, you're talking about the otherwise powerful polarization or polarizing Americans include uh, many corporate and wealthy people who support especially the Democratic Party and too often employed 
divisive tactics. Then you say, don't believe me, but consider columnist Adriana Cohen, uh, who wrote a reb- uh, her, on her website about real clear politics. What was it that she wrote that she exposed that you was put in here in the book? That would be page 83, and you're, you're talking there about an August uh, event she did in August 2022. And so oh, okay. big tech had big tech had been long, you know, in cahoots with the Biden administration. Oh yeah, they were out in Jackson Hole at the uh, Four Seasons there at Teton Village. And what happened? There was a wedding by Adriana Cohen, uh, and uh, and she wrote in the, as you indicated, the real clear politics. The people that showed up for that wedding, uh, and I, I've been out there many times, are the. the Who's who of big tech? You know, certainly Zuckerberg. You had uh, the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken. You had others. And they jetted in there on, in some cases, in Blinken's case, you know, government jets. And it demonstrated, you know, who is this cabal of uh, the rich and the famous and the elite that are collaborating and working together uh, for uh, what they had in mind. So you had these people, and, and that's not unusual. It's just like when you asked about uh, Klaus Schwab and the you know, World Economic Forum. They gather in Davos in Switzerland, or they gather in places like you know, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, or elsewhere. And you know, when you see that, you begin to put the pieces together that uh, they are collaborating, cooperating, and they have an agenda. They're elite, they're powerful, and they're godless for the most part. And they have very clear ambitions. And they will use the mechanisms of government, their own wealth, and other to divide us in order to take control. Because that's all ultimately what they want. They want control. The cooks of the world, uh, the you know, Zuckerbergs, and so forth. Now, and you're talking about really massive corruption, and what they're doing is tearing at the foundation, uh, at the hands of what they have in their hands, you know, their egos, their richness, um, you know, their tech and whatever else it is. Uh, But this transform of America, this was something our founders, we're way off from where our founders ever intended us to be, aren't we? Oh, yeah. Clearly, when James Madison, you know, wrote Federalist Number 10, yeah, Publis, uh, he had in mind that the nature of man, and that is we tend to be divisive. And so yeah, he said when we write the Constitution, because this came before the Constitution, we need to make sure that we know how to deal with this division. And he says either we remove the cause of division in our culture or we control its effects. And what they chose to do in a democratic republic was to control the effects by protecting civil liberties. And so we wouldn't be, you know, our our freedom of speech, our freedom of faith would not be in dispute. We'd be given whatever latitude is necessary. And that's where the Bill of Rights came out uh, in the Constitution. And so, yes, we have what we have. And I think it's an abuse today of what the founders had intended uh, now, we saw over the last 247 years, you know, waxing and waning with regard to uh, aligning our interests with our Constitution. But I think our founders were very wise men. They knew precisely uh, how to deal with the issue of division. And yet, uh, the current crop uh, seems to want to depart from that. And as a result, we have an incredibly corrupt government today, arguably, and of course our culture is going much in the same direction. You labeled, you know, pure evil what the work, you know, of Satan is, but these people have, I mean, Satan just doesn't do it. He uses people to do it. Uh, this Mr. Source you talk about here on page 61 of the book uh, is a powerful, divisive figure who promotes, you know, what he wants. But you say he's quietly orchestrating the dark money, political equivalent of shock and all, on a local attorney races through the country, shattering records, uh, flipping races, and essentially making a mockery of our entire campaign system. And a lot of people know that he's behind this. Why can't they stop him? Well, you have to have a political class that's willing to do that. And, of course, you know, who does he fund but the left? Uh, in their political campaigns. You mentioned uh, the district attorneys. He, he supported the district attorneys and 
on the left coast, certainly in New York City, uh, here in the Washington area and elsewhere through big money. And he's always done this. And, you know, I identified Soros as a problem more than 20 years ago when I was the Family Research Council, and we tried to interview him in his, in his New York offices, and he refused because, um, for whatever reason, he had his intentions. He didn't want that exposed. And yet um, I debated some of his uh, proxies uh, over the years and found that, you know, they are pushing the most radical of all agendas. And so what we find in these crim crime-ridden cities uh, where there's a Soros district attorney, uh, we find that they want to destroy uh, the America that you and I love. And yet uh, we've had uh, the political left has been cap taken captive by the likes of Soros money and some others. Uh, and as a result, uh, we're really in a, a very dire situation, arguably. And it's not just domestically. Uh, but certainly uh, the prowess of the communist Chinese who uh, see the weakness demonstrated by the current uh, government in Washington and see the decline in our culture, uh, they understand that we're vulnerable. And as a result, uh, they're beginning to you know, use what I call unrestricted warfare and have for some time uh, to really bring about the demise of the United States. Now, on page 101, you, there you talk about believers should avoid dividers. Uh, you quote Romans sixteen seventeen. It calls believers to avoid those who cause division. You say, why? Because such persons do not serve our Lord Christ. Now, Robert, with that being said, we've got people out here that will call themselves conservative, but they hubnub with the people that are liberals. And, you know, you'll see them together and all this. It just makes you think, are they really conservative? And is this where our problem is? Is there in that line of those that kind of do both? Walking um, the line between those two camps is very, very dangerous, as you know, Mark. And it seems to me that you're known by the people you associate with. You know, here in Washington, because I still work with government, you know, unfortunately, I have to associate with, uh, in a professional way, with people that I, I totally disagree with. Uh, but if you have options, you know, why in the world would a believer in Christ want to associate with someone who is radically evil? You know, and, and I know from where I'm speaking. You know, my my own mother worked in the the President Ford's White House, worked on Capitol Hill. Uh, she also became the personal secretary for. Gene Dixon, the psychic who had access to the White House. Uh, and so, you know, having done, you know, been in that setting, you know, I, I saw firsthand the wickedness of what we see in Deuteronomy, I think, 19, you know, in firsthand. And we need, as believers in Christ, to be separated from that evil. But at the same time, we need to call it out. And so I... Hopefully, I've used divided we stand to call out the rank evil that is among us and to allow it to continue. Certainly, if I have any say, it's not going to, and I'll use every means that I have that God's provided uh, to you know, undermine uh, what the devil and the demons and his proxies that are elite and powerful people, whether in government or in the public sector, are doing to our country and to our world. Now, you also talk about here in the book about we should be especially or equally suspicious of the proponents pushing ESG. So can you talk to us a little bit about this ESG? Yeah, the, certainly the environmentalists, uh, you know about the Green New Deal. Yeah. And what the Green New Deal has in mind is, of course, replacing uh, fossil fuels with you know, green energy and green energy windmills and, you know, the lithium-based battery cars, the electric cars and, and the like. You know, they, they blame, you know, so-called climate change on, you know, the use of carbon fuels. And therefore, you know, the Biden administration and their lackeys in the Congress have been, you know, pushing uh, to abandon carbon fuels, to demonize carbon and gasoline and so forth, and, you know, embrace long before we are able to do it, uh, these other uh, means of energy. So, you know, this is really a lot of wokeism, as far as I'm concerned, and based upon bad science. Uh, but, you know, 
that's part of it. So certainly the, the whole social justice system that they're trying to impose on for-profit and non-profit companies that, you know, it's really deeply embedded in our public education establishment. It pushes uh, secular humanism. It pushes the LGBTIQ plus uh, agenda in our schools. It pushes the transgender issue. Uh, it, it really tries to use collective guilt through regulation to impose their particular social agenda on the rest of us. And, of course, it's incredibly anti-God. And then, as we've discussed earlier, the whole globalism piece, uh, they want one big, happy world family, no borders. So you know, the Biden administration destroys our southern border and allows anyone to come in and to be treated like a citizen deserving of all the you know, things that a citizen used to be able to get. Uh, and, of course, it, it makes us mutually dependent on the likes of even China, which, of course, you know, up until the present time, makes 90% of the world's generic antibiotics. And as a result, uh, we're short in those supplies because we've become over-dependent upon people we can't depend upon. And so the whole ESG is really a religion. Uh, it's led by people like Mr. Biden, by the John Kerry's of the world, uh, by the, the wokish, you know, socialists that uh, we see on the television uh, by the progressives. Uh, it's all a cabal uh, that is all about taking control, and they're using this as a, a wedge in order to accomplish that. Well, folks, stay with us. We're going to be back with more after this. On purpose, with a purpose. For a purpose. To get God's truths into their lives. Share God's love with people who need encouragement. You get the truth of God out there and it resounds and it resonates. 91.7 The Word. It does amazing things in people's lives. Welcome back to Crosspoint. My guest today here on Crosspoint is uh, Colonel Robert L. McGinnis. Uh, we're talking about a divided uh, nation, of course, divided we stand, the globalist scheme for a one world government. If they want to know more about this book, how do they do that, uh, uh, Robert? Well, it's available on Amazon. All 10 of my books are, as well as uh, you know, Skywatch Defender uh, Publishing down there in Crane, Missouri, Barnes & Nobles, all the other booksellers uh, have it available. So it's, it's out there. Yeah. We know the Chinese party is probably one of the more dangerous countries that we're facing here in in america but don't you think that or i guess the world actually but all this division all this is leading up to really what's getting ready to happen as far as the prophetic end times is that not right no i agree totally you know all the indications are that you know we're you know really accelerating in that direction, Mark. You know, certainly, you know, last last year I had Kings of the East, you know, a right. a, a book about uh, the Chinese effort to take over the world. And um, they're deadly serious. They began a war back in, you know, arguably in 1949 when Mao Zedong took over the uh, PRC, the People's Republic of China, uh, with the uh, Chinese Communist Party, and you know, unrestricted warfare means that anything goes economically. They can pump fentanyl into our country to destroy us, much like they accused the West of destroying them in the 1850s with opium. Uh, they infiltrate people through our border, ready to you know take care, take out our infrastructure. They use cyber warfare to take out our uh, capabilities of. You know, running our power plants and our water plants. Uh, they attack us daily by the millions with their army of cyber warriors. Uh, they are building a military par none larger than ours and, you know, soon to be as capable as ours. And of course, they're using their economic might around the world through Belt and Road Initiative to take down, you know, any nation that's vulnerable. And I tell you, much of Africa has fallen. Uh, we've seen what they've done with Saudi Arabia and Iran. Uh, they have the you know, Russians as proxies these days, and, of course, they're taking over much of South America as well. So, you know, the Chinese are a deadly threat against us. It's, 
and, and it's not something, it's, it's just not talk. It's, it's real. And I think anybody that has studied this, certainly as I have, understands what's happening. And so all of this is pushing us to you know, the prophetic end times, um, as well as our own culture and the implosion of targeting of you know, believers around the world. It's not just here in the United States. People are ramping up the, the attacks against uh, you know, Christians especially. Uh, terrible atrocities throughout the continent of Africa. You know, the Chinese communists have gone after, you know, not just Christians, but certainly people of all faiths and even the Falun Gong. And then, of course, throughout Asia and elsewhere. Europe is, of course, dead spiritually, as far as I can tell. And and so you have those things, you have the pandemics, you have uh, the natural disasters, and then arguably something that you know i'm beginning to speak out on uh, I, I would argue that uh, these so-called uh, sightings by that the pentagon is reporting about uavs or uh, ufos uh, may in fact be part of you know the coming of the end time there's a lot to be concerned about yeah i have no doubt on that whatsoever chapter 13 talks about the federal government and as a polarizing agent uh, you say in here and you know as we said here today, if the way things continue to go, if they, something doesn't get changed, uh, we're not going to be able to sit here and talk about these kind of things. Because you mentioned in here Joe Biden being the extreme divider in chief. And you talk about right when he came into office promising to unify the country, he quickly polarized the electorate. And it didn't help that his election in many accounts. He seriously was tainted by allegations. And, of course, we know what is going on with all of the things there today in our country. Um, but he, you know, he purposely started dividing the nation uh, that's divided today. Uh, talking about your book, Divided We Stand. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, he divided us uh, on the first day on energy, you yeah. know, green versus carbon-based. He cheapened our dollar by massive giveaways, and of course, you know that was intended to grow government dependence, which is really you know, leads to socialism. Which you know I, that's really Marxism. You know the whole immigration issue is a travesty. We're dealing with it, and five million, perhaps maybe more, have come into this country and. Uh, they're on the government dole, and they're hurting the taxpayer. Uh, the voting system, they corrupt it. You know, certainly the, what's going on in, in our major cities with the crime epidemic, you know, that, that's incredibly disturbing. You know, it's discomforting for all of us. You know, the, the whole diversity, equity, inclusion issue we've talked about, you know, speech criminalization or the demand by... Uh, certain parts of government and the educational establishment to use the right pronouns and uh, the whole transgender push, uh, the COVID-19 vax versus unvax, uh, and of course uh, a dual justice system and much more. These are all incredibly divisive things that Mr. Biden has overseen, which is you know, really tearing the country apart. And that's why I say that, you know, that we're as divided as we were back in the 1850s before we entered the Civil War. And I'm afraid unless we you know, really come to grips with this and, and find you know, a solution that where we respect our differences but we don't impose those differences on others, uh, then there, there may be a, a future which is not something any of us want. Chapter 16 of the book is entitled Spiritual War with Division. You say, I don't believe God ever intended for the world to be filled with angry, divisive people. Today, however, many people are angry about almost everything from politics to religion and much more. We should blame Satan for the polarization. Uh, Then you go down there and says, that brings us to the spiritual consequences of today's polarized uh, world and how Christians ought to respond to this tragic situation. So how, how should we as Christians respond? Prayerfully, first of all, and that's always the, the first thing for Christians. We need to recognize what, that God's called us to be salt and light in this culture. Um, you know, yeah, based on polling, you know, the most people in this culture hate their foes. It's not just dislike. It's, it's downright hatred these days. So, you know, they're, they're energized in a way that is incredibly Dis- destructive. You know, I, I outlined a, a host of biblical principles that ought to be applied by believers 
in the context of the culture in which we live. And uh, in each one, I, I say, for instance, uh, you know, we should spend more time with fellow believers than with the lost who tend to be divisive. You know, if you surround yourself with divisive people, it's going to have an influence on you. Uh, we need to know for, uh, be known for speaking the truth in spite of the fact that this culture, you know, wants us to constantly lie about things of, of great importance to us. And that's hard, and that takes people to, to stand. Uh, we need to, uh, as Paul's encouragement by living a graceful life in the face of division, this is all about the attitude you embrace as division surrounds your life. So, uh, And I go through both New Testament and Old Testament principles that you know, we need to make that part and parcel of who we are uh, in our neighborhoods and in our interactions with our schools, our workplaces, our churches. Uh, we need to be you know, Christ-like. And, and unfortunately, the culture is not going to help us. It's, it, we really shine and we really stick out in this culture today that is incredibly not only anti-Christian, but pro-radical you know, and pro-evil, uh, which is very distressing. In the afterward part of the book, you say America is increasingly divided because it long ago abandoned faith in God and turned to politicians for answers. Unfortunately, most of our political classes serve fall for the wrong reasons. When I look at something like that, um, today I see a lot less patriots serving. Uh, people that really do care about the country, people that are actually, you know, years ago, the way I looked at it, Colonel McGinnis, was even if you had a not such a nice guy on the other side of the aisle, they still were basically patriots, and they still were Americans, and it was American first, you know, regardless in the end. Uh, but we don't see that today at all. Yeah. Yeah, it's political party, unfortunately. And, and I can say it's both the major political parties. Correct. You know, arguably, we, you know, a third party would, you know, that stood for patriotism, love of country, and so forth, uh, that would be refreshing. And yet, um, I think we've been stiff-armed by especially the Democrats, but the Republicans, there's many of them in that same situation. We ought to think of America first. We ought to think of, you know, our God first. We ought to think of the things that, you know, made us, you know, the country that was the envy of the world, uh, uh, the, the Constitution, uh, the Declaration of Independence from the Brits. Uh, there are reasons why I think God blessed us for the 247 years, but I'm beginning to wonder uh, if he's going to withhold his hand uh, going forward, and given the, the decadence uh, that we see coming out of Washington. And, and I've been, you know, Mark, you know, in and out of Washington for over 50 years, and so... And as I've indicated earlier, I, I still work with the government inside, and I see daily um, how we have really declined as a uh, people that at one point uh, were much, much better because we were closer to the Lord. And today, of course, we're very alienated as a culture away from uh, where our founders began. You say here also in the book, page 120, you say the alarm of our, our polarization wasn't confirmed, uh, confined to our political leaders just prior to the 2022 mid-election, 57% of Americans agreed with the statement, America is heading towards the end of democracy. And that's kind of a, a scary thing to think about. And, you know, even today when I interview people on the area of the prophecy of, of what's going on, I'm having several of them tell me they believe we've actually surpassed Sodom and Gomorrah with, with what we're doing. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Billy Graham's wife, Ruth, uh, said, and I've quoted her a number of times over the years in other books perhaps, and she said, God's going to have to apologize if he doesn't punish us you know, for what he did at Sodom and Gomorrah. So arguably, you know, you go into Genesis and you find out how decadent that culture was. I think we're as bad, if not worse. Yeah. And, and I find that just spiritually humbling uh, that we've come that far. And yet, you know, the world in which we live today here in America uh, is incredibly corrupted. It's amoral. It's abandoned God. And it's abandoning, you know, just the, the sense of, values and, you know, 
the country that uh, so many have fought for over the years. We're not what we used to be. Yeah, and we know this is a it's a spiritual war, really. It's kind of a yeah. cancerous spiritual division we have uh, within our nation. Uh, but you still believe there's there's good there to be had, uh, but Christians are going to have to step up. So what would you tell the, the Christian today that stands before you and says, what can I do? What would you tell them? You've got to get involved. You can't just sit back, be consumers of the social media, believe what the mass media is telling you. Uh, just stay in your own little confines of your church. You've got to get out. Just like I said, we, we went and you know, shared the gospel at the drag queen show that was not far from where I live here. You have to get involved you know, in the ugly business of politics, but don't be ugly. Uh, you have to be known for the truth. That, that's why, Mark, I laid out those principles. Those principles, most believers will know, because uh, they're taken right out of Scripture, but the Scripture is very clear. You know, we're going to stick out like a sore thumb in this culture. And if we don't, you know, what good are we? You know, because the world has really, you know, embraced the likes of what Satan and his demons and his proxies, the evil people that have been enticed by wealth and power, what they are doing today. And we've got to stand up against that. And, and, and there are many fine Americans that are doing just that, but not nearly enough. And so we have to change that. Well, the book's entitled Divided We Stand, The Globalist Scheme for a One World Government. I've been talking today with Lieutenant Colonel Robert L. McGinnis. Um, Colonel, tell us again how they can find out more about this book. Also, you've wrote a lot of other books that are good as well. And uh, anything there that happens to do with that and what you do actually in life. Yeah. Uh, my my ten books are available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, other booksellers. I write some chapters for Tom Horn in some of his books, so you'll see me uh, listed as one of the authors there. Um, I, don't, I have a website on Facebook uh, I publish uh, articles elsewhere, and I'm often on uh, great programs like yours, Mark, and others across the country. So I'm, I'm trying to do my part. Uh, sometimes it's difficult here in Washington to, to, to shine for Christ, but that's uh, what we're called to do, and I'd encourage others to do likewise. All right. Well, thank you so much for again joining us here on Crosspoint. Well, thank you, Mark. Well, a great interview having today with Robert McGinnis. Helped open our eyes a little bit. We know what's going on out there. Helps to get a little inside information. And his book, Divided We Stand, provides that. Also, the other book in my other hand, The Holy Bible, that provides a lot of information that helps with that book or any other book in this world uh, that you're going to read. The Bible is the inspired Word of God. It contains everything you need to walk through life. It's the very essence of life. You can find in it. It accurately directs life every day. Shows you what eternity holds. The Bible contains the most important words you're ever going to read and certainly ever follow. Be sure to join us again next time as we again discuss issues that are affecting the church. Have a great week. Allow God to use you for His purposes so that greater things can be done. Make your life count in God's plans for eternity. I'm Mark Taylor. Crosspoint is a program produced in Studio 101 at KNAO Radio. Not all of the views on Crosspoint reflect those of the management or staff of KNEO. You may contact the Crosspoint program at 10827 Highway 86 East, the Osho, Missouri, 64850, or by email crosspoint at kneo.org. You can hear Crosspoint four times a week, Saturday morning at 1, Saturday afternoon at 2, Saturday evening at 9, and Sunday evening at 7. You can also listen anytime online at kneo.org. Are you a Christian who likes to read? If not, there's a whole world of Christian publishing out there that you're missing out on. I invite you to check out the Author's Corner podcast where I talk to the latest Christian authors each week about their new book releases and what's coming next. So if you're ready to jumpstart your spiritual growth with the newest books and the authors who write them, check out the Author's Corner podcast with me, Roberta Foster. Harper's Kennel of Stella, Missouri is proud to be sponsoring this portion of broadcasting on KNEO. Owned by Judy and Danny Harper, Harper's Kennel of Stella, Missouri specializes in French Bulldogs. For more information, the phone number is 417-628-3083.